I just remember, how, how did I get to this point? That this is my life. Tina Hoffman never intended to become a prostitute, but eventually she lived up to her stepfather's words. I remember my stepdad telling me when I was little, you know, oh, you're just going to grow up and be a whore like your mother. My mom wasn't, of course, you know, she was an extremely hardworking, you know, beautiful, wonderful mother. After enduring years of verbal abuse, Tina's self-image was crushed. I just started really kind of hating myself. I, um, you know, and I would, I would excel at everything that I did and just try, you know, I would try to overcompensate, I think, and um, try to do the right thing. When Tina began college, she was ready for a fresh start in life. But things didn't turn out as she'd planned. At a party one night, Tina was drunk and was raped by two fraternity guys. So what thoughts ran through your mind right after that rape occurred? I guess I blame myself. It was my own fault. Um, I kind of heard my mother's words that she always used to say, you know, you made your bed, you lay in it, you know. I mean, I blamed myself. I, I shouldn't have been drinking. I shouldn't have put myself in that situation and it wouldn't have happened. Tina never reported the rapes. But the eerie feeling she had whenever she saw her attackers was so strong that she quit school and joined the Navy. But she wasn't there for very long. I had gotten kicked out of the Navy. I had gotten caught smoking pot in a fan room out to sea with seven guys. I didn't care. I had no business being in the military. I was not a fan of authority anyway. I did not want to, I didn't like people telling me what to do. She did make one close friend though. He wanted to get married. And I really thought, you know, I am a used piece of nothing. And who really wants to have a wife like that? This is really as good as it gets for me. I might as well just do it. He looks okay. You know, he's a, he's a decent guy. It wasn't really, you know, it was just, I just thought this is as good as it gets for a girl like me. Tina's loveless marriage failed. She found herself broke, raising two young children, and needing money fast. I was a single mom by myself. I couldn't afford to pay for daycare. Um, I was at risk of losing my home, of losing my car. I had a good position working for the newspaper. I didn't care. I didn't really see myself as a valuable person. So she looked up escort services in the paper and was hired. Each afternoon, she'd head to a motel and sell her body for $100 per client. Did you ever think about how this new profession would affect your family? They didn't know about it. Um, the girls were really, really little. They were um, like one and three at the time, and they didn't have a clue um, that I was doing that. It was just so far from where my life started out to be, you know? I was a Girl Scout. <laughs> I, I remember, you know, that went through my head all the time. On my honor, I will try to serve God. And I knew that I wasn't. One night, Tina thought she'd smoke a joint while waiting for her next client. But she couldn't find it. She looked everywhere, including the motel's Bible. Couldn't find it, but, but something stopped me. And I looked down at, at the Word, and just like when... You know, when your parents read to you and you're little and you see that magnified, you know, once upon a time, that's how it was. It just came to life out of the pages. And it said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And something happened to me. Something in my heart felt that word. It felt like God was saying to me, I love you. I don't think you're despicable. I do not hate you. I do not. I'm not repulsed by you. I just felt that love and that forgiveness, and it's not really something that I had ever known from God before. I just always thought He was, you know, uh, a mean God, you know, who, who was there to punish me when I did wrong. And for so many years there lately, I, I had just done so wrong that I thought, you know, I, He could not stand me. And all of a sudden, just the love of the Father came over me. I just got down on the on my knees by the side of the bed, and I just cried years and years and years of just all of this stuff, and it's just I'm sorry, you know, and that kept coming back to me. All the while, though, you're waiting for your next client to come in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, and I walk out, and he's walking in, and I'm like, see ya. <laughs> then months later, 
she had another encounter with God. I was just flipping through channels one night, and, um, and there was John Schneider. There was Bo Duke, and he was talking about Jesus. And I thought, he's a cool guy. Why, why is he talking about Jesus? After the interview, Pat Robertson gave an invitation to receive Jesus. And since Tina had never actually taken that step, she prayed along with him. And again, just like that night in my motel room, it came down. And I just, something happened in me. Something changed. I felt cleansed. And I woke up the next morning. I walked outside. And, and it was, I understand now what a born again experience is. It's been over 15 years, and Tina hasn't looked back. Today, she's a successful real estate agent and sells multi-million dollar properties. All of the things that used to happen to me, the inappropriateness and all, that doesn't happen anymore. It's gone. The Lord has removed those things and just knowing who you are in Christ, you know, it doesn't matter what you're involved in, where you've been. He loves you. He wants to be that dad that you have needed your whole entire life. You know, that baby wasn't there for you. God's real and, and he loves you unconditionally.